Hi, welcome to the Villages 365. I'm Jan. And I'm Debbie. And today we're going to do number four of your questions asked marathon. Yes. So we're going to try and get all the questions and get us all caught up. Um, and our first question actually is from the video, your questions answered um, from June. Sherry Sandstrom asked a couple questions. How are the neighborhood block parties planned? Do you need a special permit to have bands in their garages or driveways? Are all neighbors invited? Are food trucks permitted? And what is the process? So um, I have looked it up and I don't see that yeah, anything I... is required, right? No, and, there, and people have um, singers and bands in their driveway. Um, I don't think you can block off this area. area but yeah. a lot of people have a cul-de-sac in mm -hmm. there and a lot of times they'll have a cul-de-sac party so it doesn't really um affect Impede the traffic yeah in fact track uh, affects traffic and also there is an or a uh, noise ordinance at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. so and most people are pretty much done it's a you know by then right we're tired and that was yeah and as far as how are they planned i when i responded to this initially um so i live on a street there's two cul-de-sacs actually on my street. So anyway, we have, you always have somebody usually in the neighborhood that's the organized person. So they have all of our contact information, our emails and phone numbers and stuff. And she's real good about even just updating everybody as people move in and out and things change. But anyway, so they will decide. And when we first moved here, um, our block actually had a block party every, every month, not every week, every month. And um, for some of the neighbors, it got to be a bit much. And um, we we're very busy and so it just got to be much. So there was a vote of how many times and everything. And so anyway, it got tuned back to like twice a year. So everybody can do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, that happens to be what our um, neighborhood does now or our block does as far as that goes. Um, with the question, are all neighbors invited? I would say that would probably be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't have a private party, have a private party. But if you're going to kind of take over your street, yeah. you might want to make sure everybody is invited if, if they don't want to join then that's up to them right and in our neighborhood um, we have some musicians in the neighborhood and they pretty much put a flyer out for everybody and um, they also have a golf group that they golf with different partners different couples and then they go out to eat once a month and so it's like you know whatever you always have that one planner in the neighborhood that mm -hmm. uh, will get things together <laughs> for you so that's yeah that's the way so both of us have similar situations with that um, the next one under still June questions answered, uh, Loomer K, how is the current homeowner's insurance situation impacting the residents of the villages? Well, it's the whole state of Florida and everywhere else because of all the disasters and floods and um, tornadoes. I mean, you spread, you spread the risk around and you spread the, you know, the payment around to everybody. But Bird, yeah. ours um, has gone up. Um, it's 3000 a year for our house, uh, 1000 for our umbrella, 1000 for the car, and 200 for the carts. Um, that is significantly, significantly higher than when we moved here, but everywhere insurance is higher. And for us, our, our homeowner's insurance, um, and also keep in mind, because I will say, um, I think in this video too, in the, in the chat, there were some people saying, well, you need to reach out because this is where you can get cheaper insurance. So keep in mind, there's a couple things with the homeowner's insurance. So you can have regular homeowner's insurance, just your homeowner's insurance. Mine is actually re relatively cheap. I would say the breakdown, I think of my, so my insurance is about $2,200 a year. But when you break that down of that, like 900 of that is hurricane. And we also have sinkhole coverage. So Absolutely. that increases it also. So it depends on the type of coverage. So I kind of hate when people put out just a blanket statement of, um, oh, like $2,200 is ridiculous. Um, you can get it for 800 over here. Well, maybe, but you also want to make sure you've got the correct coverages. I mean, you know, we also have, I think, a, like a $500, $1,000 deductible. Our deductible is very low. If we chose to, we could bump that to five or $10,000 and, and reduce our premium. So right. when you're asking the question, it has definitely gone up, um, but when you are listening to others, just make sure you're comparing apples and apples and that the coverage is the same. Because I'm I'm pretty sure that when somebody said, I think that the quote was like $800 or something for homeowner's insurance. Well, technically that kind of is my homeowner's insurance too, but we have the hurricane coverage as well. Um, and you, you can opt 
for yes or no on that. Um, my thing, I'm paranoid. I'm always like, well, I'd rather have more coverage. I'm the insurance agent's dream. I'd rather have more coverage just in oh, case. Yeah. Well, and if you upgrade your house, I mean, we built on, made our house bigger, redid the inside, so it's worth more. And so we called and to replace this, if it burned down, there's no way the insurance would you cover know, what you have. Cover it. So yeah. that's why our insurance went up also. Well, was... and, and the replacement cost, even if your value hasn't gone up, the cost of building supplies, the cost of, so even if you had a $200,000 house that maybe five years ago cost $200,000 to build, yeah. today, even if that house didn't go up in value, but the cost to rebuild it is yeah. higher because the expenses have gone up. So. And we haven't switched um, our insurance because we have sinkhole. And I don't think they offer that anymore. Yeah, it depends on where you live. So it's just a good question. If it's important to you, just ask because yeah. at a time they wouldn't do it north of 460 or north of 466. And then they said, well, yeah, we will. And then there were some exceptions. And well, if you had your house for this long. So anyway, just ask the questions. But right. just be careful when you're hearing people say they've got cheap insurance because they may, but may not have What's all the cover? same coverage. Yeah. And, right. and I right. think that when you're dealing with a lot of older drivers, that's why, because we didn't have... Um, uh, the umbrella for a while and our insurance agent just about flipped and he said with a Florida law I mean they can sue you they know how much you have they know how much you have in your stocks and yeah. um, then they'll go after you so yeah. the umbrella it, it's a peace of mind it's expensive but it makes us feel better it's yeah. not necessary but yeah it gives you that extra yep. coverage if you need yep. it so. um, CE designs asked do any vegans live there are there any whole food whole food, plant-based restaurants. So um, I'm sure there are vegans here. Um, I don't happen to be one of them, so I can't really give you good recommendations for food. However, um, most of the restaurants do have some vegan options, but as far as is there a restaurant solely devoted to vegans or even vegetarians, not that I've seen, but I swear I read in the paper and I couldn't find the article. I well, swear I, I, read. I found it and there are four vegan friendly restaurants. Okay. And one of them is Fiesta Grande, Flying Biscuit, mm -hmm. um, Island Fin Poke, which is the one down by Brownwood. Right. I think that's a Hawaiian. Dirt. It is, but still got like sushi and all that stuff. So I just wonder, are there any that are solely vegan? Not solely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And you have I... you have several grocery stores here that will carry vegan yeah. type things, but and the Sakura Japanese restaurant. Mm -hmm. We'll have some vegan uh, dishes. I think most of them kind of have at least one or two on the menu, as I'm sure in any area. But um, I, I swear I read an article, and I'm sorry that I, I can't, can't remember it. it and find it. But, yeah, I swear I read an article that there is a vegan restaurant, like specifically a vegan restaurant coming, but I, I can't tell you right now. So just I would say just keep your eyes and ears posted. And uh, and maybe somebody will open one. Yes. I, I, I think there is one coming, but I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, the next one is Bear Creek Girl. Are you from Minnesota? Mm -hmm. um, are there recommendations, accommodations there for handicapped golfers? And there are. I was going to take a picture of that cart and I didn't get it done. We've been gone. Um, but there are some carts that you can drive onto the green. The chair swivels and you can stand up or you can hit sitting down. Uh, you just need to tell them that you're coming when you're yes. doing your reservation because I think there's two of them around here anyway that they kind of go back from Tierra yeah. to here and we see it we see it out here quite a bit there's a yeah, couple guys little so. single carts and they yep. they're and very they, and they can go yeah that's it, very cool I mean I, when, that's the first time I've ever seen yep. that but I thought that was amazing that people that have some physical limitations are not letting them hold them back right so that's they amazing. love golf and they're gonna continue yep so that's awesome uh, Stephanie Ewart asked, are there any areas in the villages that do not allow long-term rentals or short-term rentals? Um, there are decks and bylaws which, with each and every neighborhood. So um, when we did our, um, I can't remember the name of the video, it was, about, it was with our realtor with Kim. And um, she had mentioned that there are there is a neighborhood in Fenny that rentals are restricted in the decks and bylaws. So what I would tell you is to just ask, if you're looking with a realtor or if that's a big concern for you, when you reach out to the realtor, say, I would like to live in this section and are there any neighborhoods that can 
restrict rentals. Um, the realtors would be much better because we would have to look through every single set of debts and bylaws. And there's in a here. bunch. I've tried. Yeah. I've tried that. Looking up weird. There's um, yeah too many restrictions, but yeah, yeah. There's a whole list of them. But so that would be your best um, way to find that answer is through a realtor. Yes. Uh, the next one is from Mark Schmidt, and I know who you are. Um, <laughs> Can a person be ticketed for walking on the wrong side of the road in Florida? No, Mark, they cannot. But I suggest, and I think I've said this a million times, not a million, but you want to walk toward traffic here. Uh, right. We don't have sidewalks, yeah. but you can see what's coming. And some people are distracted and some people might not know how close they get to you. But it is recommended that um, you do walk towards traffic. When, for I think says, like, when he says, can a person be taken for walking on the wrong side of the road? So are you talking about going toward the traffic or are you saying if you're walking with the traffic, can you be ticketed? Because you are supposed to walk. Vehicles go with the traffic. People go against the traffic. Walkers go against the traffic. Right. So, but I, I don't I think, think Mark was um, being a smarty. Still love you, Mark. Hi, Mark. I don't know you, but I love sarcasm. He's our most local cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Dana Carol Herman asked, why do people get fined for feeding birds in Florida? So it's not actually even just birds. You can get fined for eat, feeding the gators as well. Mm -hmm. um, the idea in general is leave wildlife alone. Um, if you feed wildlife in any area, like think about your squirrels and stuff. People put up bird feeders and if the squirrels know that there's food in there, then they hang around. If right. you don't have a bird feeder in your yard, you probably have a lot less squirrels, that type of thing. And so the idea is to make, let them be self-sufficient, let them work how God intended them to work, which is get their right. own food and feed themselves. Because then all of a sudden, if people weren't around to feed them, they will literally starve. Well, yes. If they're used to come into your bird mm -hmm. feeder or if you're putting out feed, and especially it's the sandhill cranes or some birds that are protected, and that's where you get fined. Mm -hmm. And like the gators also. Um, and those sandhill cranes, they know where you live. And they'll and pack, they, they will pack <laughs> your uh, screens and yeah. they will, if your car's out there, they look at the reflection, they'll scratch your car. I mean, you, you just don't want them tame. That's not, that's yeah. now, like you said, that's not how God intended birds and wildlife to be. So that's just, but that's why. Yeah. Yep. Um, from, can you still love the villages? Lois March asked, why do they need high schools if they don't allow children to live there? Well, that's to attract people to to uh, to uh, work in the area, and they're great schools. It's a charter school. Mm -hmm. um, you work in the villages, no matter what job it is, your kids can go to the school. Mm -hmm. And um, Eastport, it's not Eastport, it's Middleton, Middleton yeah. is making a family-friendly uh, development, mm -hmm. so you're closer to the, like if you're a doctor, if you're a waitress, if you're, you know, no matter what you are, you're not driving from Ocala, you're not driving from, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're right here in the villages and your kids can go to a very, very highly rated school. So it's, it's pretty smart actually. Yeah, it was a very smart idea. Um, Cynthia Amatron. Amatron. Where are you from in Minnesota? And I'm like, no, I'm not from Minnesota, but we did have cabins in Northern Minnesota. My grandpa had, he built one, gosh, in the thirties. I want to say. Um, so I, my mom went up there as a little kid and I went up there as a baby and that could be why my skin is so tan and the way it is. But it was uh, Lake Washburn and we sold them maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago. But beautiful area. I love Minnesota in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> and then from our Did You Know uh, in June, Kathy TCO asked, how do we contact the two storage sites you mentioned? So those were the ones that we, that I had spoken about were the ones that were owned by the villages. There's one in the Spanish Springs area off of El Camino, kind of by the hospital-ish over there. Um, and then they've got another one, which is on Rolling Acres, which is behind the woodworking um, facility there. And um, those are both, you would contact, contact as with a lot of things in the villages, district.org. Um, but My her phone place. number, <laughs> uh, the phone number for them is 352-753-4508. And um, they're very helpful. It depends on the size of your vehicle. Um, and people do store RVs. They also store boats. They store just cars over there. So um, depending on what you're looking to store, um, there are is availability. 
there's probably less of the bigger sites. So if you have some 45 foot RV you're trying to store, you may end up on a waiting list. But um, anyway, so that's how you would reach them. Okay, our last one from Did You Know June, Charles Bartholomew, fishing and TV, anyone ever catch a gator? Well, I don't, I have not heard of anyone catching a gator, but I do know a gator caught a dog once. Um, I would, I personally wouldn't fish in, in a pond with, I know gators are in there, but there are a lot of people that do, um, mm -hmm. do fish and, um, you see them all the time over on the way to your house, um, and there's there's certain ponds you can fish in. Yep. And so that probably is on the, the dog dove also, but um, where you can and where you cannot fish. But I have not heard. I've heard of gator encounters, but and really no gator encounters though in the villages, right? Was that yeah. dog in the villages? There again? was there was over there by um, Sumter one time where a little dog a gator came out to get the little dog and some guy reached down to get his dog and was bit. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he wasn't dragged into the water or anything like that, but then they tell people to be careful. I mean, that that is like... It's bait. Lunch yeah. <laughs> for a gator. A dog is about the right yeah. the right side. So you just be careful, and um, you can still fish. People get big fish out of there. So Yeah, they do. Catch and release, though. Yes. You can't take them home with you. So... That's all of our questions yep. for this episode. So, marathon. yes, so stay tuned and we will have another one coming out for you soon. Have a great day.